Welcome to My Security TV and this Cybersecurity Weekly Podcast. My name is Chris Cubbage. I'm the Executive Editor. And today we're going to be joined by an Australian cybersecurity startup uh, from Perth. And we've got Stefan Prandle, the CTO, and Tim Jones, the Managing Director. Gents, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Chris. Hi. Uh, Stefan, you're, if, if I can say, being the CTO, uh, a bit of the brainchild behind Hyperfire. And uh, it's exciting to always speak to a, a sort of almost a brand new startup and uh, particularly I'm a Perth boy. So it's good to have a, an Australian uh, startup from Perth. Introduce us to the technology and uh, where you're currently at. Yeah, so uh, Hyperfire's entire technology based, stack is based around a concept called Power AI, which we've developed. Uh, basically, it's uh, designed to shift the uh, way that cybersecurity network uh, technologies work from a uh, from a machine learning first perspective to a more well thought out statistics first perspective that reduces the amount of compute required and makes these things lightweight enough that you can deploy them pretty much anywhere, cloud, virtual, on-prem, wherever. And the technology has come about from your research uh, there at university. How do, well, let me talk us through the process because that's an interesting story in its own right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my uh, PhD research is what spawned this uh, wonderful thing. So essentially, there are these uh, series of statistical laws that we know of uh, that uh, basically are, you know, consistent with nature everywhere, right? They're involved in uh, fun, other technical sort of things, such as likes on Facebook, followers on Twitter. Uh, these sorts of laws are really, really strong in such that if you uh, know that there's something, uh, if something doesn't match it when it should, you already know something's wrong. You don't know what the reason for the anomaly is yet, but you know that there is one, which, you know, in and of itself is a big jump away from having to figure out what normal is before you can say what isn't. Uh, and essentially what happened was, is during my research, we found that there was this uh, paper that suggested that network traffic actually conformed to these laws. And we went, hang on, if that's the case, that means we don't have to do all this machine learning for anomaly detection in the first place. We can sort of just take the metadata from network packets and just figure it out from there and sort of invert the pyramid. So instead of having to learn everything, you just kind of know and work it out. Uh, so initially this was designed as a sort of, uh, you know, uh, initially this was designed as a denial of service mitigation system which we do have, we actually have built a prototype of uh, like a commercial prototype. But uh, essentially what you can do is simply from uh, packet metadata itself, you can identify using these properties, which packets belong to the uh, DDoS attack, even if the packets themselves look exactly the same as the packets that are being sent by legitimate users uh, at something like a 90 something percent, 99 point something percent accuracy with a 4% or less uh, false positive rate. And that last bit's really important because the TCP and UDP retransmission rate as built originally into the net, into the internet uh, is less than 4%. So it's just a little bit bigger than 4%. So if it's less than 4%, what it means is, is that if you're doing this, no one should ever notice. And in our trials and our tests, we've noticed that no one does. The other thing you can do with this is obviously because we're able to pick out these sorts of anomalies and it's such a strong detection tactic, uh, we can use this as, yeah, as an a priori based method of just knowing immediately when something's wrong with a network. Uh, it could be something generic, like someone's logged in for the first time into something or someone's uh, copying a big file that they don't usually copy, say, at the dead of night. But uh, these sorts of events are sort of things that as a security team, you want to know about, want to be able to investigate. Because if someone's copying a big file in the dead of night, why are they doing that, right? That's something unusual. And of course, it's able to sort of detect these anomalous uh, activities without requiring policy to determine when these sorts of things are happening, uh, which means you can do it uh, really, really quickly and have a grasp on where the sort of anomalous stuff in the network's happening. That feed in and of itself is really, really handy if you've got a sort of established seam and a sort of established data feed, because that can direct you to which sort of false positives, if you will, are more interesting to investigate. Uh, and so, you know, if, if, if something's saying that a whole bunch of events are happening on a network and this says, well, these machines over here seem like something weird's going on and these machines over here seems like something's going on, that's where you want to sort of investigate first because mathematically that's where the most unusual yep. stuff's happening. So it is um, a, it, it, it's happening in real time as well. It's not something yeah. that is analysing it and takes a little bit of time. Oh, it's, no, no, no. It can happen um, in real time, right? Yeah, no, this is, this is incredibly quick. Uh, the 
amount of math that's required to pull it off is very, very small in comparison with machine learning. Machine learning is incredibly bulky, a slow capability, right? To train and then retrain. It's fast when you actually have it hard baked and ready to go, but you can't do that with a network because well, what you're doing as a business or an organization is always changing. So you have to keep relearning. That's what all these systems are designed to do. What we've essentially done is found a universal that we know to be true. And if you've got that kind of capability, I mean, in all data science, if you know that first, use the statistics, it's more accurate, it's faster, it's more lightweight, and uh, you know, it'll get the job done a lot faster than trying to build some sort of machine learning system to wrap around it. Yeah. Um, this is common in a lot of data science sort of things. Uh, and it's really, really neat that we've been able to bring that sort of capability over to network security where basically no one thought that could be done. And I think that's one of the interesting things with this. You, you're building, it sounds like a, a product range based on this technology. One, you've got an IDS. Uh, you've also mentioned the DDoS. Tim, over to you as managing director for a new startup. And it's a, a sort of a university commercialization spin out uh, from a PhD student, which is always uh, exciting as well. What are the, the initial roadmap uh, sort of plans that you've presented for the for the company and and maybe some of the challenges you might be facing? Yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, so we have uh, Firebug, which is our IDS system, um, ready to go now. So we've deployed that in a number of customers um, and uh, you know, obviously uh, keen to get as many deployments as we can. Um, we have uh, Firebase, the, the DDoS system uh, is in uh, beta trials at the moment. We expect that to be available uh, in market uh, in say, you know, four to five months. Um, I mean, in terms of challenges, um, we probably, you know, faced similar challenges that, uh, that all uh, startups face, um, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, I suppose, just, uh, uh, you know, getting out there, getting, getting sales, getting, uh, getting known in the market. Um, but we've been pleasantly surprised, uh, you know, at the, at the reception that we've had from the market. Um, you know, we feel like we're, we're really filling a gap, uh, you know, in terms of an IDS system that's fast to deploy, fast to learn, very affordable, um, and also, um, you know, uh, very accurate. So, um, yeah, we've been, we've been pretty, uh, pretty, pretty happy with the, with the uh, reception we've received. You've had you've got some initial series funding as well, so you've got some good backers there. Uh, yeah, so so we actually, uh, as as part of spinning up from Curtin University at the end of the last year, uh, we did a funding raise, um, which was oversubscribed. So um, we we're, were very happy with that. Um, you know, that's meant that we've got uh, you know, a reasonable runway um, and you know plenty of resources to roll out into the market. Maybe talk us through your customer engagement and what's involved. So is it something that they can just download and maybe put it into their SOC uh, as an additional tool or an early detection uh, platform? Or do you think there's a bit more there for you in terms of services or uh, uh, integrating it into the customer's sort of existing security framework? What, what's involved? Yeah, so I mean, it certainly can be deployed very quickly. Um, so uh, it, it can either be uh, deployed onto a, an on-premise um, server, uh, you know, which is um, uh, you know, a fairly sort of uh, uh, sort of off-the-shelf um, you know, server configuration. Um, we can also deploy as part of a, a virtual appliance uh, in the cloud if um, you know if it's a, a cloud-based network that uh, the customer wants to monitor. Um, or we can deploy very rapidly, uh, uh, essentially in a, in a matter of hours um, and get the system to a point where it can be providing useful information you know, on the same day that it's deployed. Right. And maybe the client profile, does it suit any particular client profiles or maybe what's the business model? How does a client, uh, sort of is, is it a subscription based or yeah, what, what's the business model and, and the, sort of the client can start to budget for it? Um, yeah, so it is a it is a subscription model. Um, so we're we're basically uh, operating on a on an annual license uh, structure. Um, so the way that we typically operate is um, uh, give the the customer you know the, the ability to deploy it, um, and uh, at this stage um, a, a free trial uh, in order to you know prove the uh, you know pr prove the the value of the system on their network before moving on to a uh, onto a paid license. Um, and we're finding that's been very well received. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah what, what do you think your key value proposition is in the market? It's it's a busy market, yeah. uh, but you've got the sovereignty is a good one that you're an Australian cybersecurity startup. But do you have a sort of a, a real centre point that you feel that you can uh, differentiate yourselves? Yeah, I mean, there's there's probably a couple of aspects to that. So in terms of um, network monitoring, uh, you know, we're a very affordable um, solution. Um, and um, as Stephen said, we're very rapid to deploy. Um, so if someone was wanting to have network visibility uh, you know, in less than 24 hours, that's something that we can offer at a very affordable price. Um, the solution, uh, Firebug solution can also be used for um, threat detection and threat hunting. Um, so again, uh, rapid to deploy, um, rapid to get you know, valuable uh, network visibility um, in a situation where a client has strong suspicions that um, you know, there's, there's strange activity going on inside their network um, and they want to um, you know, be able to you know, provide some, some visibility uh, that they currently don't have. Um, Stefan might have um, some sort of yeah. technical aspects to that. Yeah, I mean, our, our solution is based on a statistics principle rather than machine learning. So the, the critical differences all spawn from that sort of change. First off, it is capable of giving you in, uh, useful information within a statistical sample. And given how fast packets move through a network, mm. that does not take very much time at all to achieve. Uh, so that means we can be deployed, as Tim said, well within 24 hours, be already producing useful information with regards to where the unusual sort of activities happening on the network, where the sorts of things you want to look at are, uh, what they might even be in some cases. Um, and then, uh, you know, on top of that, we're talking about something that is incredibly lightweight that, you know, if you want to get visibility over a small cluster of machines, you can run this on something with say four cores and eight gigs of RAM, uh, which means you can deploy this basically on any infrastructure that you've got lying around which is very, very different to some of our competitors, which need, you know, full yeah. on hardware deployments that are quite beefy and custom built. Uh, and yeah, and simply because we are using, you know, metadata, we can actually do this kind of detection of unusual activity inside encrypted feeds. So if you've got a business that's got a lot of HTTPS traffic or, you know, encrypted tunnels and whatnot, and you're not sure where the actual activity is. Oh, hang on, move the camera. Oh no, not the camera, that's not the okay. camera. Um, and you're not actually sure where the activity is, uh, this can give you information on where the you know, potential uh, threats may be, even if what you're using is all encrypted without you having to actually go ahead and proxy it and decrypt everything. Yeah, well, well I've got a, a uh, Firebug white paper here and I was going to ask you what the call to action might be, but I think the white paper might be a good, good uh, sort of first point from a customer's perspective. Maybe talk us through the technical testing that you did because it looks like you've tested it against the MITRE uh, framework as well. Um, so yet, how did you go through that process and some of the, the outcomes? It looks like it's been very broadly tested. Yeah, yeah. So uh, with um, our early clients, we were doing a set of tests to try and, you know, identify exactly how much this was assisting them in detecting, uh, you know, potential threats in their networks. And uh, one of the things we did was with assistance from their security teams, we actually drew up a set of tests based on a selected set of categories from the MITRE ATT&CK framework. And this wasn't a set of categories from just the front end of the uh, ATT&CK framework or, or even the middle. Uh, we, we basically took everything from you know, access, uh, intrusion, uh, lateral movement, uh, file uh, extraction, collection, all the way through to exfiltration. Uh, and we had both the obvious and easy stuff like a really loud port scan uh, through to simulated botnets uh, through to uh, actually sending traffic out and obfuscated protocols. So uh, one of the ones that I'm very, I love doing is, uh, uh, you know, just being in the security space is exfiltrating files over ICMP. Uh, and we tested that inside this. Uh, and the really neat thing about Firebug is, is that even when uh, something isn't, uh, you know, absolutely malicious, say for example, with said the ICMP ping extraction, it's still able to determine that this is unusual with regards to the rest of the network. So it can turn around and say, hey, if something else is going on, you might want to keep note mm. that this has happened because this is unusual, but not at the point that's absolutely critical. Uh, what was very interesting is that that was the lowest level of alert that it gave us with regards to any of the tests we did. Uh, this thing's capable of picking out pretty much anything that is uh, actively malicious at the very least. Uh, because simply put, when you're an attacker and you're trying to attack something, 
you are not doing what normal users do. Uh, you are not using uh, the same sort of applications. You're not acting in the same sort of way. And in some cases, if you're using tools, you are actually actively abusing how the uh, protocol stack works. And of course, from a mathematical perspective, that's hugely different. And that shows up immediately and very loudly to Firebug. So we had a very comprehensive uh, you know, thumbs up from that test. And that's basically what got us into this uh, in the first place. We were very, very happy with that. They were very happy with that. And uh, now we're up here. Yeah. Well, I think the, the MITRE framework is probably the best one to go to. It's probably the broadest uh, to, mm. to benchmark yourselves against. Uh, Tim, the immediate roadmap for you, you're almost uh, a COVID native company being launched late <laughs> last year and also being in one of the most isolated uh, cities in the world, being in Perth. Uh, how is it potentially a good thing with, with COVID that, you know, people aren't expecting face-to-face -face meetings? How do you want to sort of spread your, your word across uh, the country and, and uh, maybe a call to action on, uh, for companies to make inquiries? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that's right. I mean, I think, uh, you know, we, we are COVID native. Um, we've designed the system so uh, it can be deployed um, remotely. It can be updated remotely. Um, uh, we have also, you know, designed our processes so that um, we are very rapid to deploy, whether it's an on-prem uh, or, a, or a virtual deployment. Um, typically, we can deploy within, um, you know, seven days for, for on-prem um, and far less for uh, virtual uh, deployments. Um, in terms of a call to action, uh, yeah, basically get in touch. Um, you know, we're keen to give people a uh, play with the system, um, you know, see what they can see on their network. Um, you know, in 100% of cases uh, where we've had deployments with customers and they've been uh, had suspicions that there was, you know, strange activity going on, that, on their network, we've discovered what it was where other applications weren't able to. Um, so really, we just want to get the, the solution uh, into the hands of customers um, and also uh, MS. MSSPs and MSPs who are, you know, monitoring and, and managing uh, customer networks for them. Um, yeah, we're, we're just keen to get uh, to get Firebug into their hands so they can have a play and have a, a look at what it's capable at. Absolutely. Of. It does sound like, you you know, again, being a new company, you want as many of those case studies coming through to prove yourselves and start spreading through uh, word of mouth as well which is part of what we do here on, on uh, the uh, Cybersecurity Weekly podcast, yep. just gets people listening and aware of you. So it's Hyperfire, that's hyper with a R, F-I-R-E uh, dot com. And they're in Perth. Uh, definitely reach out to them. We'll put the link in the show notes. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll hear more from you. We'll also put a link out to the white paper uh, as well. But uh, we've been joined by Stefan Prandl, the CTO, and I'll call you the founder, uh, Stefan, uh, of Hyperfire and Tim Jones, the managing, managing director there. So thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Very interesting. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Good work.